Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Carl Rob. welcome to the video where I teach you how to run old games on new hardware. Uh, I've done a video on this before already on my old channel, but I'm doing a new and updated version on this channel. So if you've come from that video, hi! Before we get into the actual steps of how to run the thing, I want to talk about the, the problem that I specifically am going to be solving in this video. Now I have this game called Sheep, it is, I've had this game for a very very long time, as you can hear. I have a disc copy of it. And it doesn't work so well on this computer, as the footage you're about to see will show. These are the sort of issues that DXW and D can fix. I'm specifically having frame, uh, frame rate problems, but it has been known to solve games just not loading at all. But yeah, one other problem that I found out with this game uh, recently, well actually today, is that if you control delete, go to the task manager, just to kind of alt-tab out of it, alt-tab back in, the game looks like this. <laughs> and no game is supposed to look like that. So we're going to fix that. So the first thing we need to do is go to our browser and we actually need to get two uh, programs. So the first thing we're going to need is 7-zip because the program that we um, uh, download comes in an RAR format and we need to be able to extract that. So I would probably say click this link or this link. I mean uh, it, uh, any four of these will work, just make sure you get your correct architecture. If you want the alpha, then you can do this. If you want a more stable version, just hit that link. We're not going to be downloading that because I already have it installed. What we are going to be downloading is our, uh, the star of the show, DXWND. It doesn't have its own website, which means you have to go to SourceForge and stuff, but it's perfectly fine. SIS, I believe, stands for DirectX Windower or something. It probably stands for something similar to that. It's essentially a program that is designed to run old games like this in uh, a windowed mode, but at the same time it provides compatibility options to actually run games that have issues. So if we go into our downloads folder where we just downloaded the RAR, we can then do uh, right click 7-zip, extract, we could just do extract to this folder here. As you can see we have our folder here and we have all our stuff here. So this is the uh, the file we're going to need. I'm actually going to move this to a slightly more convenient location for me. Uh, I would not recommend putting it in your program files specifically um, because it won't be able to save any of your configurations. So I'm putting it in my games folder uh, just because this is where I shove everything. So you see all my Steam stuff is here, all my Twitch stuff. I don't even know if I have anything in there anymore. Um, I don't know if that Minecraft is even installed. Uh, but if you're going to DXWD, and watch the we do here you'll get this attention to read the help menu and you'll get this tiny tiny little menu here this menu is where all the magic happens so now we need to add what's called i forget what it's called actually but i guess we can call it like a profile or something it's just some settings that dxwnd will use to run the program and the first thing to always do is to right click hit import uh, navigate to this exports folder here so we're going to go games dxwnd exports and have a look to see if the game you want to run is in here. Uh, I don't actually know how many files are in here. Can I get that information from this menu? I can. Um, there are 1,691 uh, files in here, all of which relate to different games. Uh, the game that I want to run today is not actually on this list, but as you can see, there is quite the list here, so I would recommend checking this list out first if you have a game that you want to run. Um, we'll just keep going, there's, some, there's a lot of Star Trek games there. There's the Tomb Raiders if you wanted to run there, although you can just get those on Steam nowadays. Uh, Come on and Conquer is in there as well, stuff like that. Um, but if your game is not in that list then don't fret because I'm going to be showing you how to add it manually and it's quite simple. So you can do right click and then hit add and you get this menu here. So we're going to type the name of the program, so cheap. We're going to set its path, so in my case it's games, standalone, sheep, and then this sheep exe. You basically want to put the uh, the executable in this, and then you want to copy and paste that, and put the it in launch as well. So you want the exe of the game that you're trying to run. Beyond that, there's not really any settings you need to change. Uh, I would recommend having run in window turned on. Uh, because it does fix some resolution issues. However, if you do want the game to appear full screen, then you can hit this desktop button down here and it will actually take up the full screen. You can mess around with resolutions. I don't know exactly which resolution options change that because there are a few. We will get to those other settings in a bit. Um, but this will, as I will now prove, just work. Oh my god, that was flickery. <laughs> 
I don't know why that was so flickery. Uh, these cutscenes worked fine anyway, so we will skip these. This game is weird. I, I don't know if you can research it if you want, but this game is weird. As you can see, we have a workable frame rate. Um, we don't appear to have any sound, or at least OBS isn't picking any sound up. Oh, we do have sound. I don't know. If, I don't know if any sound is being picked up, but it is playing. Um, yeah, we we have a frame rate we can work with, and we can go into the configure. We can set all this stuff. We can go into the training mode if we wanted to. But we're not going to waste anyone's time with playing the game. That should work in most cases. For what I can tell, that works in about 80 to 90 percent of cases. But there are some other options that you can look at if it doesn't work. Now, I did actually take the liberty of looking at a few of the defaults to see what options were actually set to which ones weren't um, and generally to see what uh, what changes the guys who made DXW and D made to make the things run and the answer is not a lot this menu generally wasn't changed this was always set to default the window style was always set to default even though the default was stick frame I don't know why uh, every now and then the window size and position was set to free I don't know if that make a difference or not for all I can tell this limit resolution stuff doesn't change too much although if you with, uh, with this particular uh, game if you run it in too low resolution it'll just crash instantly which you don't want mouse stuff um correct mouse position is already on you can hide it if you want um it just kind of depends on whether you want the mouse to be there or not i think if it has a custom cursor you might want to do hide but i don't know um but direct x well specifically direct x2 is where s a few of the settings were changed so i noticed on one game that this set 16 bbp was turned off, but the others it was turned on. I think on one of the, these compatibility options was set. Um, nothing on this side was ever changed. Uh, I think DirectX 3D, I think m maybe one of these, I don't remember. As I said, the actual changes that these guys made were very limited actually. Um, so in theory it should just work out the box, but there are all these settings. If you kind of do know what you're doing, there are all these settings you can try out and hopefully one of them will work. Although as I said, just running like this probably will. If you, if of course you do run into any issues and you can leave uh, your concerns in the comments below or you can join discord server using the link in the description but yeah that brings us to the end of the video if you liked it then say hello down below if you really liked it then consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads if you really really liked it then consider supporting me on patreon of course you don't have to with that in mind i'd like to thank my super patrons adam j jackster and shashank and yeah with that i'll see you some other time <laughs> for, for the next thing we do i don't know what that is yet um but yeah see ya